In his article, Men, Sex, and Homosociality, Michael Floods explores how cis male social bonds with other cis men influence their heterosexual relations with cis women. Masculinity in this context exists as a sliding scale. As Flood describes it, men's practice of gender has been theorized as homosocial enactment, in which the performance of manhood is in front of and granted by other men. For some, sexual activity can exist as a competition to achieve higher masculine status or as a form of bonding with other men. Men, Sex, and Homosociality analyzes interviews from a group of young heterosexual cis men aged 18 to 26 in Canberra, Australia. While the results of Flood's research and his theories on how heterosexual cis men organize their social relationships do not by any means apply broadly to all young men, he calls attention to certain groups where this appears more prevalently, one of which being university athletes. While sexual assault is highly underreported, a 2015 study published in the Journal of Adolescent Health reported that cis women attending college or university are five times more likely to experience sexual assault than women in the general population. Despite widespread knowledge that men belonging to all-male university groups, such as fraternities and sports teams, are frequently involved in sexual assaults, they are rarely studied as social contexts that encourage the sexual coercion of women. Often, fraternities and athletic programs actively encourage forms of masculinity that make involvement in the sexual assaults of women more probable. Intimate storytelling of sexual activity and the objectification of women is brushed off as locker room talk, while women in subject face real-world consequences. Something which Floods alludes to in his research is the gamification of sex and sexual assault by young heterosexual cis men. In my first year attending Mount Allison University six years ago, I came face to face with this reality. Coming from a city where anonymity and intimacy was taken for granted, I was not prepared for the gossip and stigma in a small town after consensually sleeping with a member of the university's football team. A friend who was dating another member on the team explained to me that I was added to his kill count and was now considered undateable by other team members, but would also be considered easy to engage with sexually. The term kill count referred to the list of women he had slept with. Each team member was expected to recount the details of each new sexual experience and disclose who they had slept with. These details were not only shared with team members, but also women who were dating members on the team and other students in their social circles. While growing a kill count amplified a member's masculine status, it diminished the reputation of the women they had slept with, as well as the women who were sexually assaulted. The stigma of being easy or used in the small university community of 2000, a population barely larger than that of the high school I attended, stuck to women like glue, and in many cases further victimized them. In her 2016 article, The Rape-Prone Culture of Academic Contexts, Patricia Martin states that academic institutions often turned a blind eye to cis men's sexual assaults of women. She suggests that because of conflicting interests, their dedication to women's safety is constrained. Colleges and universities strive to please many external audiences, alumni, funders, sports enthusiasts, the community, and the media, to name a few. Sports enthusiasts may be more interested in winning competitions than in seeking justice for an athlete's wrongdoing. Funders are not shy about promoting their agendas and may withdraw contributions if a star athlete is sidelined. Alumni who believe that boys have a right to be boys may pressure a president to hold back on punishing an accused athlete or fraternity member. The gamification of sexual activity amongst young heterosexual cis men in all-male university groups and the system that protects them puts student populations at risk. There's a deep need for further examination to the social contexts in university communities, which encourage the objectification and sexual assault of female peers.